Hi class, it's Jamie Batts, your instructor for Bio 204 AMP2. We're, love you babe, my daughter. <laughs> um, so we're continuing, sorry, with chapter 20 and talking about adaptive immunity. We just finished talking about the um, innate immunity that we all have, that kind of built in um, immunity that is gonna respond the same way, no matter what. In this section, we are going to talk about that specific acquired and adaptive immunity that can change over a lifetime or that some of us have um, differences compared to others. So let me switch to this um, PowerPoint. Nope, wrong one. This one? That was one I just did. Give me this one. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so again, we're talking about specific immunity. This is coordinated by the T cells and the B cells, those specialized lymphocytes that we mentioned earlier in this chapter. Remember, T cells are responsible for that cell-to-cell -cell immunity. B cells are responsible for that antibody-mediated defense. So these are, um, this, this type of immunity is not something that you're born with, right? You have to be exposed to the antigens in order to to, in order to generate this type of immune response. This is kind of like, think back to when we were talking about blood types and we were talking about the hemolytic disease of the newborn, where the first time the mother, the RH negative mother is pregnant with an RH positive fetus, there's no immune response. But once her body has been exposed to that D antigen, then she develops the antibodies. That is adaptive immunity. So that's what we're talking about here in this chapter. It's not present at birth. You get it through um, being exposed to the antigen or by receiving antibodies, which could be passive. So there's an active version of adaptive immunity or a passive version of adaptive immunity. So let's talk about active acquired immunity. It can be naturally acquired. This would be developed after a natural exposure to an antigen like, um, you know, when I was younger, for instance, uh, many of you who might be a little older like me, uh, you may have had the chicken pox when you, were, when you were young, right? We now will no longer get the chicken pox because we had been exposed to that antigen at a young age. We went through the effects of the chicken pox, those itchy things, and now we're fine, right? Um, most people nowadays, though, are not... Um, the younger people, I should say, most people nowadays are not naturally um, immune to these chicken pox like we are. They um, are exposed or, or they, they're, uh, they're vaccinated, so they're exposed in a different way. So it's, it's not through um, natural um, acquirements. This, it's through artificially induced. So something artificially induced would be like when you're purposefully exposing yourself to that antigen. So that would be like when you're immunized, you get a flu shot, you're purposely exposing your body to that flu shot and therefore, or, or to those flu antigens, and therefore your body's immune system is going to respond by developing the antibodies to fight off that antigen when you come in contact with it in the future. So it's going to help stimulate that response. Typically vaccines are dead or inactive pathogens um, and they're just meant to uh, expose your body to those inactivated antigens so that your body can respond accordingly. We can also have passive immunity. So let's, let's back up just a second. Our adaptive immunity or our specific immunity can be naturally acquired or um, artificially induced right? Naturally acquired is being exposed to the pathogen. Artificially induced would be like a vaccine. Our adaptive or specific immunity can also be acquired passively through natural or artificial. Passively uh, means that you're literally like giving somebody the antibodies. And you can do that naturally uh, in the form of breast milk. Breast milk has in it antibodies from the mother when the baby is nursing, those antibodies are being passed on to the baby. You can also acquire passive immunity by, um, other than breast milk, by having actual antibodies injected into you. Um, the biggest or most common example of this would be something like rabies, right? If you think that you've been exposed to rabies, you've been bitten, you're gonna go to the doctor and you're gonna get a series of rabies shots that are literally injecting you with 
the antibodies to fight off the rabies virus. So there's a graphic organizer here for you, mapping it all out. You can see our immunity can be innate and nonspecific. That's what we talked about in the last lecture, right? That's our skin, our hair, right? That's the uh, lysozymes and our body secretions and the complement system and all of those things. Then we have specific immunity or adaptive immunity. It's the same thing. Um, it can be active or passive. Active immunity is where you are either naturally acquiring it just by being exposed to it in your daily life or by being vaccinated, or you can have passive adaptive immunity, which is where you're acquiring it either through breast milk or by literally getting an injection of the antibodies into you. So let's talk about some properties of adaptive immunity. First of all, it's specific. Those T cells and B cells have receptors for that one specific antigen. Go back to our nonspecific immunity, your complement system, interferons, right, natural killer cells, they're all going to respond in the same exact way no matter what the pathogen is. Here, they're very specialized and specific. So the responses of the T cells and B cells that have been activated are specific also. They're not going to affect other antigens. They're only going to target the antigen that they are designed for. Our adaptive immunity is also versatile, meaning millions of lympho lymphocytes are each um, sensitive or each kind of honed in on one specific antigen, right? They're all meant for a specific antigen. So I can't just grab any old T cell or any old B cell and hope that it's going to work on this new pathogen that just came into the body. You have, your body's going to have to defend itself specifically against this specific pathogen. So when, when these um, lymphocytes are activated, they're going to divide. So, um, that lymphocyte division is going to produce more lymphocytes with that same exact specificity, with that same exact sensitivity to that specific antigen. So all the cells that are produced are going to basically be a clone of that original lymphocyte that was sensitized to whatever that antigen was. And this is whole process, which we'll look at. This is just the general properties of adaptive immunity. So we had that it was specific. We had that it was versatile. We also have memory associated with this. So immunologic memory, right? This is that flu vaccine idea. This is that concept that I had the chicken pox when I was younger, so I'm, I know I'm never going to get it again, right? Those activated lymphocytes are actually going to produce two types of cells when they divide. They will produce an attacker type cell that's going to attack that antigen immediately, and they're also going to produce a memory cell. These memory cells can be activated later when the, the body is exposed to that antigen again. So it's going to allow for a quicker, stronger, faster, longer lasting response than the first time your body was exposed to that antigen. That's the concept behind a vaccine. You expose your body to the antigen, your body is gonna create all of these memory cells, those memory cells are gonna wait around, and then when you're actually exposed to the flu vaccine because your kids were sick, your neighbor was sick, your husband's sick or whatever, your body's gonna act very quickly to defeat that antigen and you won't get sick, hopefully. Right. So four, the four properties of adaptive immunity, specificity, versatility, right? There's one, one for every antigen, immunologic memory, and the fourth one is tolerance. The immune response is going to ignore your own cells but target those non-self cells, right? And this tolerance can actually develop over time with an exposure to uh, a, an antigen that kind of lays around for a while. That's how come some diseases can actually go undetected for a very long time. Your body's not recognizing it as, as, a, as a pathogen. So tolerance, memory, versatility, specificity, four main properties of adaptive immunity. There they are again. You can pause the video here, go back and review this section, which is just a general section on adaptive immunity. We're going to start talking about what triggers that adaptive immunity. Um, so a basic overview, and I have some drawings that I'm gonna do. So to find a, an eraser for my whiteboard so I can get all this prepped for you. My handy dandy whiteboard of science that I use. So let's talk about the overview here. First of all, oh, I'm using my husband's hat. <laughs> so he's here. All right. So these antigens that come into our body, right? These antigens are proteins that are on the, the invaders, right? The, these are the things that are on the outside of a bacterial cell, 
or a virus infected cell will produce these antigens. So antigens are either going to infect cells like the virus that I just mentioned or um, they're going to be processed by the phagocytes. Remember phagocytes are the neutrophils and the monocytes are going around they're gobbling up things that don't belong. So as these cells are going along and gobbling up invaders, they're recognizing them and they're saying, whoa, these antigens do not belong here. So what they do is they do something called antigenic presentation. They take the antigen of what they just ate. So uh, I just ate some strawberries, right? So I'm going to take the strawberry seeds of what I just ate and I'm going to stick them on, the, on my cell membrane. I'm going to stick them all over outside, right? I'm still a Jamie cell. I still belong here, but I'm just letting everyone else know that to look out for this guy. It's kind of making like a, a wanted sign, right? These are the antigens that are coming. Look out for them, right? This antigenic presentation that occurs from the phagocytes, they stick the antigens on their plasma membrane. That's what this presentation is all about. It's going to trigger an immune response. So um, these, this response is going to trigger our cell-mediated defenses from our T cells and the antibody mediated defenses from our B cells. So let's look at how this works. Um, we have our phagocytes gobbling up any foreign antigens, right? When they do that, they're going to uh, present the antigen to on the outside of their cell membrane. And that's what this antigen presentation is all about. It's going to trigger a specific defense. It's going to activate our cell-mediated and antibody-mediated immunity. There's communication between the cell-mediated and antibody-mediated immunity. The T cells and B cells kind of communicate together, and they can perform two, it's my dog, two specific um, attacks. The T cells are going to directly attack the antigen or the, the pathogens chemically. Right, they're going to secrete those perforins. We've talked about those before. They're going to perforate and explode those cells. Or the B cells can cause agglutination by producing antibodies, and those antibodies are going to clump around the antigens that are on our pathogens. Either way, a combination of both, in most cases, produces the destruction of those antigens. So here are the slides individually. I'll leave them in the PowerPoint so that you can go back and print them out individually and summarize what's going on in these pictures. So uh, let's talk about this MHC. It's called a major histocompatibility complex. Major means it's large, histo, tissue, compatibility. So we're looking at the compatibility of these tissues, the compatibility of these these plasma membranes, really. So this is gen a genetically determined component. This MHC complex is a special special region on our on our cells. So the placement of these MHCs it, with the antigen of the foreign invader is called antigen presentation. So remember, these phagocytes go around; they gobble up. Right, these are the neutrophils and monocytes going around and gobbling up foreign invaders, and now they're going to produce this MHC. It's a, it's a protein that's already on their cell membranes, but now these cell membranes are holding up the flag of the invader, or the strawberry seed, if you will, of what they just ate, right? So they're going to present whatever this antigen is to, to the rest of the surrounding area so they know that this antigen is there. This is what's going to help activate our T cells. So. Here you see the whole process. You have, we ha well, we have two different um, types of MHCs, um, major histocompatibility co um, complexes. We're talking about class one right now. So the antigen presentation on a class one protein is going to be triggered by a virus or a bacteria. It infects the cell or the cell engulfs the bacteria. Either way, those antigens get into the cell. Follow it here on this picture. You can see this little virus injecting its DNA. That DNA goes into our, um, our cell or the, the bacteria has been engulfed by the cell. Either way, the uh, peptides or the glycoproteins, the antigens that are on the outside of these cells or that are coded for by the DNA of the virus are going to go in 
um, to special areas of the cell within the endoplasmic reticulum. That part doesn't really matter that much. But they're going to be modified by the cell, and then the cell is going to produ produce an MHC on its cell membrane that has the antigen of that invading cell on it. So it's taking part of the cell that it was just invaded with and putting it kind of on a, on a flag post, you know, on, on top of its cell memory. Look out for this, um, this antigen. So that's, that's this whole um, kind of initiation process. And I'm going to graph, I'm going to do a flow chart of all of this. So if these pictures confuse you, hang on, we'll get through some of the words understand the concepts and then we'll, we'll kind of graph it out because there's a lot of steps to it. So antigen presentation by the class one viral or bacteria cell coming in, right? Then you have these peptides that are present in the cytoplasm. They go to the endoplasmic reticulum to get modified and they join up with this class one MHC. And then the class one MHC are transported out to that cell membrane. So now our cell has this kind of sign on it that says, look out for this antigen. So let's talk about the different types of MHC proteins. What we just talked about was a class one. That is present on all the nucleated cells. It's triggered by viral or bacterial um, infections, right? Class two MHCs are present in only antigen presenting cells. So these are the, um, like the monocytes or the dendritic cells, which we mentioned in the lymphatic system. So these are special, um, le special leukocytes, special white blood cells have a class two MHC. All other cells of our body have a class one. So going back to here, this picture is a class one MHC. This could be like uh, the epi epithelial lining of, of your uh, the back of your throat, right? Or your respiratory lining or your digestive system lining, right? So this is not the cell that's being invaded here and the cell that's presenting this antigen here is a body cell. It's not a white blood cell, all right? This cell is a white blood cell. So here we have a class two MHC. So this is probably a monocyte, right? This is some type of antigen presenting cell. We call them APCs. That's just a, a simple term for a white blood cell that is like Pac-Man, gobbling things up. So that phagocytic um, white blood cell, APC, engulfs the bacteria. The bacteria are dissolved by lysosomes. Some of the antigens that are basically left over from that digestion are stuck on the class 2 MHC and that MHC gets sat right on top of the plasma membrane, like that little sign or flagpole or whatever, saying, look out for this antigen. It's around, it's present, it's going to gobble you up. So there's the whole thing. And again, I encourage you to use those slides to um, elaborate and um, that's just a APC and a lymphocyte. I'm going to stop the video here. This is a nice little introduction to adaptive immunity. Our next video section is going to continue with this process, and, and we'll do some drawings and map it all out, okay? Have a great day. Bye.